Welcome back to part two. So as a review, what we are studying in your description there is how to change. You know, a sin that you keep repeating, something that you keep practicing, something you do regularly. Oof, I've been there, done that, I understand that. And I'm still tempted to go back to it, so you have to fight it. But here's, here's what we said last time in a brief, quick word, um, that Jesus wants to, and He really wants to. He did everything possible. He equipped you with everything necessary so that you can have victory over it. First, He came to rescue you from it, and not just rescue you in the sense that you keep blowing it, He rescues you, He keep blowing it, He rescues you, He keep you keep blowing it. Although He does that, and if you just look through the Old Testament and the New, how God does that, He forgives and everything. So it's really wonderful. The pardon is fantastic, but we shouldn't take advantage of that, although we have to take advantage of it at the times when we fail. But if you just look at the book of Judges, for example, and they failed, and then He, rep he they repented, they cried out to God, they, he, he forgave him, gave him a deliverer, and it went like a roller coaster or whatever. But that God really doesn't want us to live as a roller coaster. In the beginning, it's like that little baby falls, they crawl, and then they fall, and they fall, and fall. Eventually, they begin walking, and they don't stumble very much, maybe once in a while. So, He wants to rescue you. He also receives you every time. <laughs> He really is fantastic with that. But anyway, the next one is he wants to restore your relationship and your fellowship with him, that you have sweet peace and sweet joy in your soul and you really sense his presence regularly and you have a clarity among in your mind and you're not polluted and everything. It's very cool. And he also wants to give you power and revive you, give you life again. Because sin deadens, sin dulls, sin darkens. It really... Um, changes you into something that you don't want to be like as a Christian. A true Christian does not want to continue living in a practice of sin. So if you're deliberately, right now, deliberately in a relationship or you're deliberately practicing some sin, deliberately, intentionally, and you keep doing it thinking you're right with God, I really doubt your salvation. Salvation means salvaging. He, salvation is changing you. And see, this is what God wants you to do. The first thing I want to say, um, I've, I have a number of words here. Um, the first uh, way to really begin changing a sin is to live a life of repentance, but especially uh, 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 to take your heart and live towards God. Repent means going from, to, or towards. And that is turning from and then going to. So repent has a sense of stopping and starting. It's a stopping of some practice sin and starting a new life and doing it right. Now, I believe um, there's a true repentance uh, from a true Christian that happens uh, when you gave your life to Jesus. Like it's a turning towards God. I love Acts 20, I think it's 21, verse 21, something like that. Paul said, I preach repentance and faith, repentance from sin, repentance towards God and faith in Christ. So repentance and faith. And so it's turning towards God, from, to. And uh, it has to do with a sense of giving your heart to God. There's a one time, in a sense, no, don't take this wrong, there's a one time repentance where you literally turn and you're walking towards God for the rest of your life. If you happen to blow it, you happen to stumble, yeah, that's understandable. But your heart, deep within the core of the mind and the heart and the spirit, the deep part of you, has turned towards God. That's repentance. And then there's a regular repentance where you fail and you're sorry for it, you regret it, you actually resent the sin, it becomes repulsive to you. But the fact is you, you, you get up and you ask, you say, I repent, Lord, I'm so sorry. You turn from that particular sin and then God forgives you. But it, it, so there's a, a second, third, you know, it's a life of repentance towards God. But I believe that you will overcome where you don't have to keep repenting over the same sin. And that's what this is about. Let's go a little bit deeper in what repent really uh, suggests here in the meaning of the Greek word. Uh, it really is talking about from sin. Every time in the New Testament, for example, it talks about repentance or repent. It's always from, from sin, except in, I think it's Luke 7, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 7 or 17? Anyway, one of those chapters, I think it's 17 actually, that talks about being sorry and regretful, but every place in the New Testament, and there's a lot of them, talks about like from sin. For example, there's nine times in Luke alone that says the word repent. You know, um, it means to literally to perceive afterwards. And perception has to do with your mind, and that's what this Greek word really means. 
and it's an after thing like after you you want to change it it implies a, a, an actual to change one's mind is what the word means repent means to change okay and it literally talks about in that greek word to the mind which it's like the deep part of you the seat of moral thinking the seat of what you're thinking about it really has to do with direction which i came up with some uh, a little uh i like using acronyms a lot to help me to remember things and uh and then it really means to convert now in the old testament the words were kind of be sorry uh, to change your mind also and it also the the word repent is is really the in the hebrew word there s-u-b um substitute it's not really substitute but i just saw that substitute your your desire for sin to substitute it with the right way right thinking towards uh, righteousness to be sorry to turn to return the use the words especially are turn to god return to god turn to god especially as maybe the pagans or the gentiles to turn to god get away from your worldly living and then for the jewish people the god's people the people of israel the hebrews uh it's return to him so like you turn to god when you first become a christian and then you return when you slip off of the path return to the path you know of righteousness living right um it actually means to change ones, and the word really implies this. It's suggested in the meaning is, I like the word dump. <laughs> dump all your sins and dump your ways and dump your selfishness and all, and change your direction. Or the U could mean doing a U-turn. You know, it's kind of going the opposite way. Stopping and starting. Change your mind, which is actually the, me actually the meaning of the word. And that includes the purpose of why you're living, the purpose of motives. So it's all in there. Repent means to do that. So what do you repent from? Well, you know, all your sins. But I came up with a list um, years ago, and I've developed it into another acronym to help remember it. Um, and I, I kind of like this particular acronym because it really uh, is good because it really shows you what you what you need to do with God. And the word is usurped. And I think of like usurping authority, you know, over someone. And so usurped has to do with, um, you know, you don't want to be the authority in your life. You want him to. So you turn from you and your, and your authority and what you think you should do to God. So here's the words. Here's the big sins. Like I, I think it's pretty well c is contained in these seven different what I call root sins. Or you could call it the roots of a tree or something. Roots of sins. For example, if I drew a, a tree here. Okay, and you got this tree, you know, out here. And then down here, you know what I'm going to draw here? Roots. You got all these roots coming down here. I believe, literally, if you take these sev seven usurped sins here, if you take these right here, which are the big, deep ones, they're a lot of times hidden in the heart of a person. And then you change this, you get the roots changed, you'll have different other sins that just don't happen up here. All sins are rooted in these in these deep sins. So if you don't change this, you're going to continue having bad fruit. So you may ask God to forgive you for, oh Lord, I'm sorry, cuss, sorry I lied there, sorry I stole all these sins, sorry I, you know, had some greed there, or whatever, lust, or I got angry when I shouldn't have. And then if you don't change this, you'll continue having the fruit. A good tree produces bad, fr a good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. So this is what we want to change, and this is what this whole thing is about. So I would like to offer it an ending here. The seven big sins that you need to repent from. Repent means to change your mind, your course, your direction from. Okay, you. Uh, by the way, S is the big one. I think if you get S down, it is the real root of all these other sins. But it happens to be in the list of S being number two. But I really want to emphasize S. Okay, what do you think it is? <laughs> Acting stupid? No, just stupid. Yeah, that too. But anyway, here we go. U stands for unfaithful. Another word for that is idolatry. And if you get that straightened out, you know, the very first commandment of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt know that God's before me, boom, or alongside me, or anything else, boom, unfaithfulness. If you change your unfaithfulness, you know, you're not, you're, you become faithful, you're not idolatrous, you're putting God in, you're being faithful to him, just like a marriage couple, you know, you got to marry somebody, you should be faithful to that person. In the same way, when you marry to God, so to speak, you're in union with him, be faithful to him, that's a root sin, is unfaithfulness. It's another word, I'll just put this up here idolatry 
Get rid of all your idols. Anything that takes the rightful place of God in your life, you need to repent from. And when you do that, your life will start changing like crazy. And then you won't keep repeating the same sin. You won't be living a regular life, a practice life of sin. Okay, S is, what do you think it is? Drum roll. <laughs> Selfishness, self-centeredness, self. I'll just say self-centered. It's not Christ-centered. I don't, I'm not going to put Ness here, self-centeredness, self but self-centered. Woo! Every sin, in my opinion, is derived from that. When you put self off the throne, when you take yourself and don't have a preference of your self, like pleasing yourself and you decide to please God, you won't sin. Every sin is rooted, no matter what you can think of. Name any sin, and you'll find the root of it is, sin, is, is self-centeredness, self selfishness. You might say, but the Gordon, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, it says the root of the, the love of money is the root of all sin, of all evil. <laughs> yeah, but go a little deeper there. If the love of money is that, which it is, what are you loving it for? You're not loving the texture of the love of money. Just love the feel of dollar bill <laughs> or gold or something. No, it's for what it does for you. It's the money that gives you pleasure in meeting your own gratifications and satisfying your soul and, or making you powerful or popular or think you're all that and all that. See, selfishness is even in that. So the root of all sin is evil, but the root of... Um, all evil is that self-centered sin. All right, self-centered, you get that. You put your, that's why Jesus, by the way, started with that, in my opinion. He said, if any man will come after me, this is Luke 9, 23. If any man will come after me, let him, what? Deny himself. Bam, that's what you got to do. And take up his cross daily and follow me. All right, so that's that one. Uh, the next one, you, and this, uh, I'm not necessarily in order, but this word has to be in order, so I put you up here. I probably would have put, put it later, but this is a big one, unbelief. I should put, question, I'll put three here, and then big, unbelief is a big root sin. Um, it started from uh, the garden, you know, not trusting God, not believing, you know, what he said, he, that doubt came to him, has God said, Satan said. Uh, and it put her thinking that, well, God's withholding. God's not as good as I thought he was. He's withholding something from me, unbelief. And, you know, the Bible says that all over the place. I mean, it's different ways of saying it. Uh, but if you think of John where uh, Jesus said in the uh, night before he died and all, he said uh, the Spirit of God will, is given to convict the world of what sin because they believe not in me. It's unbelief. It's, it's distrust of God. That's a relational thing. You got to have trust and confidence in someone to have a relationship. So unbelief, you know what it is? Um, I like what one author said years ago. I remember reading this, charging God with lying. That's what unbelief is. You're charging him with lying. You don't believe him. You don't believe what he said. You don't believe his promise. You don't believe his word. All right, unbelief. PR, what do you think that is? This is big among all of us until you repent from it. It's saying no to authority. It's rebellion. We're a bunch of rebels. Human beings as a whole, mankind, is a rebellious bunch. It's rebelling against God. It's resisting Him and doing what we want. It's a stubborn disobedience. Rebellion is a root of disobeying God. You're saying no to Him, saying no to authority. Uh, we could talk about each one of these for a while, but let's go on. P, this is a big one. What do you think that is? A big root sin. They all kind of mix together, by the way. Roots are entangled together underneath that tree. And that's pride. And now pride, I'm going to write a book on that one. I have like 80 different, I wrote literally a while back, 80 different expressions of pride. I have a whole list of them. It went on and on. It just kept coming to me, all these expressions. See, people don't think they're that proud. <laughs> pride is like really big. And that's really right up there with self-centeredness, like, not identical twins, but twins or triplets or whatever, quadruplets and all that. But pride is big. It's, it's really putting yourself ahead of God and, or thinking you can do it. See, all the other religions besides Christianity are based on pride. They really are. It's a merit thing. It's an earning instead of releasing and saying, I can't save myself. I need a savior. I mean, it's, it's right there, right in the root of a person where God changes a person where you realize I totally have to be dependent on him. 
which is humble. It's humility. And it goes on and on. a lot on that one. Pride is a big one. And that could express itself in a false pride. Oh, I'm just such a lowly this and all that. And that. Anyway, there's, I, let's get off of that because there's a lot. Eve says, for all evil desires. And I, you know, I could have put lust. And lust doesn't mean necessarily, you know, guys lusting after girls or that type of thing. But it, lust has a desire. It's a desire that's... Um, contrary to what are holy desires, good desires. And that lust could be all sorts of things. Lust for um, things, materialism. Lust for cravings for things to take the place of God. And overeating is a lust, craving things that you shouldn't, you're depending on food for your deep satisfaction or your spiritual life. I know, I mean, it's lust, desires, cravings, yearnings, yearning for something to make you happy, yearning for this, yearning for that, craving this, lust, lust means desire. Um, okay, so that's, that's evil desires, and that, there's a whole list of desires. Anything that is not uh, according to the will of God is a desire that you shouldn't be having. God's desires versus yours. All right, E, and then D is... Um, Hold on, let's see. Let's think about D. Ah, yeah. I thought of it just then. And that is, now this is deceptions, but it's self-deceptions. It's lying to yourself. You're not brutally honest with your character, with your motives, with your heart, with what you're like. So, and that leads into lying to others, being hypocritical or, or false to them. Uh, but deception has to do with, I think it's a self-deception, a self-deceiving. And uh, like the uh, lover of yourself and you're, uh, and then you, you lie to yourself to, you're not really truthful. See, that's why truth is so vital. The truth of the word, the truth about yourself. The heart is desperately wicked. And what well, says this, in Jeremiah, it says that the heart is, is deceitful above all things. It's a most deceitful, see that deception. The heart is the most deceitful thing. A, it really is. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? The good news is that God takes a stony heart, as Ezekiel says, and he replaces it with a heart of flesh, and then Christ comes into you. And that he may live, in, Paul prayed that the, Christ would dwell in their hearts by faith. And you got Christ in there, and deception is going to be harder to live by self-deception when you're being filled with the Spirit of God. You're being real brutally honest with God and everything. So it's more deception to yourself rather than deception on others, although it comes out that way. See, that's the fruit that changes, causes the fruit. I hope that helped you a little bit. So again, how do you stop you know, the stop, see there's that stop starting. How do you stop um, from practicing sin? A deep repentance and a repentance over and over until it becomes, you're really on the path now. And you don't have to keep turning and returning and all that. You are really good. You don't have to keep repenting. But it takes a while of repentance until you get that thing out of you. Amen? God bless you. We'll continue later. Bye.